n hat is the outward normal. So as you analyze the total flux, we're going to get some cancellation. And I'm going to describe that right now. So we are going to look at the flux between two particular faces separated by delta x in a little more detail. So I've drawn just one of our cubic area elements again. Now, if we look at this quite heavy gold line or dashed line, that represents the vector field A going from the bottom left to the top right of your screen. It's going through one of our volume elements and we're going to analyze the flux through two surface elements along the x-axis where we kept the y and z vari variables fixed. So we have two faces to consider. The first face at the, we'll say the bottom as you can see, which is colored in in pink. And the second face, which is colored in in green. Now, as I said earlier on, in order to calculate the flux, we need to look at the outward normal. The outward normal for the pink face is going to be outwards towards you, the viewer. Whereas the outward normal of the face in green is going to be inwards into the screen. So we know that delta S sub X is going to be delta X, excuse me, delta Z, delta Y. So the, the infinitesimal area element or the, the vector infinitesimal area element delta S sub X is going to be N hat delta Z delta Y. Now we know that this N hat can be plus or minus I hat depending on the direction of the face. So delta S sub X, the vector surface area element is plus or minus I hat delta Z delta Y. Now let's see if we can contrast the flux at X is equal to X and the flux at X is equal to X plus delta X. The flux at X is at the bottom of your screen. Here we're looking at phi sub X, which is A sub X dotted with the vector area surface area element. So that's A dot N hat delta S, but N hat in this particular case is here, and that's minus I hat. So we have minus A I hat delta Z delta Y. The next flux we look at is at X plus delta X. Something similar happens here, except this time we get plus A I hat delta Z delta Y at the position X plus delta X. In other words, the only difference here is going to be the value of A at that particular position, namely A at X plus uh, delta X and A at X. So let's say, for example, let's imagine that the value of A was fixed at those two points, then there would be a, a zero net flux. There would only be a net flux where the value of A or the value of our vector field changed. So let's go ahead and look at a number of these particular volume elements. I've just put a few of them together. If you want, you could imagine that this, this particular cube here is what we analyzed already. So we're going to qu put quite a few of them together. And we're looking at a number of faces. Now, as you can see, the faces that I've not shaded in, namely the one at the bottom here and the one at the top here, as we'll see in a moment, they're the ones that will contribute to the net flux. The ones inside will not contribute to the net flux, and I'll explain why. So let's look at the face at X1. So this face here that I'm coloring in at red. That is the first face, and as a result, it's going to have some sort of a flux because that there's only one outward normal. However, if we move to, let's say, the face that I have colored it in green. Now, the outward normal on this face, it is, there is an outward normal here due to the first surf or the first volume element, but there's also an outward normal here. So the point is that Whatever value that the field has at that point is going to be the same for both, we'll say, both faces, but the outward normals are equal and opposite, therefore you're going to get no net flux. Something similar is going to happen here, and here, here and here, here and here. But when you get to the end of the tube, shall we say, or the end of our volume, there is no cancelling 
or cancellation to occur. And therefore, there is a positive flux contribution here because of the positive i hat. And there is a negative flux contribution here due to the negative i hat. 